Now that the town's current is better, I can access the house's attic again. I almost never set foot in here. There's gotta be something. Projector. I thought I would forget its existence with my school years. What is it doing down here? Nothing. What? What is that? I believe all this was under the house. What was he doing here? Wait, isn't it exactly the same gem I have attached on my bracelet? Where did he find it? He was apparently willing to ship it to be analyzed? Shed some light on this. If you're listening to this, you are probably the person sent by the office to continue my investigation. Well, at least I hope. My name is Matthew Banks, and I started this work about a year ago. As stated in my previous reports, I infiltrated the lighthouse last month, but they just found out that a tape was missing, and I think they're on to me now. I used to copy, uh, borrow tapes during the night, but this time they noticed before I could bring them back. I didn't have time to use the new filtering machine, but I left the tape inside it. I hope it's safe there with you. Since I have to leave, I prepared the way for you, and I have regrouped all of my ongoing work onto three different boards, each including a guiding tape. The first one gathers my studies on the audio signal coming from the oceanic floor, which was the reason our interest was piqued by St. Exel in the first place. The second board will give you more details on the local cult, whose believers call themselves the Devoted. The third board is about Operation White Medusa, which is probably why you're here now. We are now definitely forced to recognize that the village of St. Exel is the center of great political and scientific interest, as we first suspected. I hate to leave like this, but I'm afraid my time has come. During the last two weeks, the lighthouse had trouble acquiring new information from ashore. Apparently, some kind of technology has been jamming their signal. Is there some kind of expert trying to hack the operation? I'll leave it to you to find out. Passports? Money from different countries? This man was not your usual anybody. Oh, and there's also boat tickets to leave for Plymouth, England. He was planning on leaving, just wasn't sure when. What is this folder? Your next objective? I'll study that during the night. A bit of reading always helps.
1977, an ultra-low frequency sound was picked up by scientists south of the Atlantic Ocean. But no one succeeded in identifying the structural composition of this acoustic phenomenon, and, and many theories were put forward. Spy submarine, human aeronautical activities on the surface, or even tests of explosives resonating through the abyss. The case remained closed for two years until a second sound was recorded 2,000 kilometers from Namibia. This time, the subject worried specialists. The position of the two recordings suggests the movement of something. In 1984, the sound was picked up again, several times around the Bermuda Triangle. Governments in many countries decided to classify all information about this issue as confidential, and the general public was kept away. While tracking other countries' progress, our secret services discovered in 86 that the French government was particularly interested in the matter and that they put in motion a special program called RORQUIL, a scientific project mainly dedicated to the understanding of unknown oceanic noises. We then decided in 1987, based on what we found in the village of saint Exel, and considering that this last signal was recorded off the coast of French Brittany, that it made perfect sense for me to start our investigation here. During my time, I discovered a platform for listening and monitoring seismic activities at the heart of the lighthouse. Only recently, and thanks to an information trading deal I made with the cult, I got myself recruited there as a maintenance agent. It allowed me to find that the lighthouse crew is, in fact, following the movement of an object which turns out to be a French military submarine. So was it only a submarine that we tracked from the beginning? But its movements are inconsistent. How did it produce this noise that we regularly pick up? I copied a lot of tapes and left them inside the hideout, but they're all still encrypted. I was hoping to get more information from it, but I spotted a car in front of the house tonight, and it's clearer than ever now that my time to leave has come. Submarine? In danger? What was the lighthouse doing? In many areas, the life in St. Exel has deteriorated sharply in recent years. Local studies tend to show that nature has adopted an abnormal behavior. Some species started proliferating more than before, while others suffered the opposite effect. Some animals became aggressive towards humans, and some bird species completely migrated and left the region for good. We've also seen a lot of upheaval 
in the behavior of inhabitants of the village and their health. Ultimately, it led to many people leaving, which left only the ones who didn't have a choice. A real change is taking place, and, and no one seems to understand where it's coming from. Additionally, these extraordinary happenings have been rumored in the region, which isn't improving the situation. The village has become a place of attraction for people bathed in pseudosciences, esoteric and the occult, to say the least. They, they now see this place as a central home to their mythology. One movement eventually took over the others and established itself as the popular cult. The Devoted. They managed to obtain this importance by being omnipresent in their protest. They vandalized sites in large areas surrounding the village, which made the local press very keen on showcasing them, and ultimately helped a great deal in converting more people to their cause. According to my research, it is governed by a certain Aurora K. I couldn't find a lot of information regarding her, but managed to seal some pictures by following her after a public meeting with the population. She built her movement on the belief in the existence of an abysmal entity which would sow its harmful influence over the region and towards the inhabitants of St. Exelor. To, to calm this underwater entity, they tirelessly seek the culprits for this curse. They unearth and send ashore on deteriorating ships coffins containing the bodies of people who have always lived here. If the boat returns and runs aground on the coast, the person and their family are pardoned. I haven't seen it yet, but... It looks like they've shifted into high gear by sending people who are still alive to sea. These are just rumors, and, and people who go missing may have simply decided to leave the area. They never communicated their plans with me regarding the future of their protest, and I'm not sure where they'll meet yet. My theory is that they'll probably regroup either near the White Manor or the local church. Infiltrating the cell in the heart of the lighthouse made me realize that the French government is very concerned about the development of the situation here in St. Exel. The development of the sect, as well as the growing anomalies observed in the population and nature, are monitored in a sustained manner. They came to realize that if they do not act, this situation will eventually draw the attention of the entire country to St. Exel. I had, in my hand, documents detailing an operation called White Medusa, the purpose of which was to methodically isolate and capture everybody in the village. Do they think that the people here are all sick or contaminated with something? Or do they mean to sweep this affair under the rug? They seem to foresee two possible scenarios for carrying out Operation White Medusa. As if by coincidence, there are incidentally two events which attract almost all the population in the same place. The village festival, which takes place during a whole weekend, or a fair organized by the village school. I was able to reconstruct on the map the assaults considered in each of these possible scenarios. A large number of troops will be deployed and they can easily prevent anyone from escaping by blocking the main accesses and roads. They will proceed using heavy trucks and toxic gas to control and direct the crowd toward them. The inhabitants of St. Exel have a Damocles sword over their head, but they don't know of its existence. 
nor when it will fall. It's probably dry now. a living experiment on sugar. Looks like some of Pierre's homemade music for me. I thought it was lost since the moving in. I love that music. Nothing. Full repaint of the arcade, 2,100 francs. I know you love it for real, Pierre, but we are going to need to have a discussion about it. Calmly. My lava lamp! I love it! Pierre probably hit it here, out of reach. Can't believe he'd think it's just a passing trend. Poor guy never understood anything about home decor. Let's put on some music. This suit. I was in the attic with him when everybody disappeared. I remember wearing it, but... We just had one. Honey, I finally finished my restoration project for this arcade machine. And I've got a challenge for you. I know you love a good one. So try to beat my best score. You will win something I'm sure will bring back good memories.
Tam, you always know how to surprise me. still echoes in my head. I need to know more. Let's find that antenna on the village beach. This tape recorder is helpful during late nights. Don't judge me, Pierre. It's my only way to hear a human voice now. Always forget to drink. I could attach this laser to my gun, see if that makes me more precise. Long time no see, also as part. Ahead, the beach and Assumptions Church. Right, viewpoint. I 
am the repairman in charge of fixing this gate. I've found a way to supply current to this unpredictable electrical panel. I've linked it to one of the small wind generators we have in the village. As long as there is wind, there will be current. Only issue is that while I was fixing it, one of those freaking birds stole the key from my van. If you find them, please bring them to my office. Mr. Levens. Beach access and renovation. The people of St. Exel suffered so much in recent years. It's moving to see that they tried their best to maintain the festivals and other traditions. Only one destination for you? My bag! Nothing. Let's take a walk, just you and me. Park mausoleums were not spared by the cult either. They are a real scourge for this village. There's a thieving crow's nest right up there, as expected. It has something in its beak, but it will only leave its nest if it appears safe to do so. Amongst birds living in the park, you will find the Corvus Picatrix. I know you, you little flying thief. They keep their precious loot inside their beak which makes it really hard to get back. To prevent such situations, scarecrows were installed by local farmers. Solve this puzzle and win a coin to use in George workshop. I don't think I can get used to it. The wind turbine is going to need a little help from me to launch. Sweet! It was enough to start the turbine!
I could not finish fixing this fence because the damn bird stole my van's key, where all my tools are. I have been trying to get them back, but it's nested high up and I can't seem to attract it. If you manage to get my keys back, please call me at the number written on my truck, Mr. Levin. I'm going to need something to break those. That will teach you to look at me sideways. Birdie, it's between you and me now. Take that! Told you stealing was bad. Now, I only need to find the truck. Probably not an organized person. He left a client's tape inside his toolbox. Excellent. Hello, Mr. Levant. I am calling you because I have... Again, a problem with the digital code that you installed last year. As I can't see very well at night, I asked you to make each key sound different. But for a few days when I entered the code you gave me, two keys no longer make noise. Listen! Could you contact me when you get my message? This is becoming a real problem for me. Stay on the floor.
beach. Here we go. I think I found the antenna. Nothing. Behind, Boisseau's Park. Left, Assumptions Church. Ahead, Restaurant Panier Acrab. 